Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of A, a BJJ, BJJ Marriage. Marriage, where we talk about our lives as a married jujitsu couple. Woo-hoo. <laughs> <laughs> Woo-hoo. All right. Welcome back to another episode of A BJJ Marriage, episode 79, with your hosts, Nick and Brittany Lee. Cheers. And special and then, guest. We have Josh, Josh Beyer. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Did, is that how you just said yep. it? Yes. Okay. German word for beer. It's a German word for beer. Josh I wanted Beyer. to say beer. Apparently, I just want beer. It's Saturday yeah. morning. <laughs> well, welcome, Josh. Thanks for coming. Mm-hmm. Josh is uh, one of our training partners in the Milwaukee area. He trains mm-hmm. at Neutral Ground Bayview. Mm-hmm. Um, and we haven't trained like specifically with Josh, but he's been around and we've been He's to so around. many events so much that we've become friends i think of it as i'm fluid's weird cousin or brother because yeah. <laughs> i try and make it there and i talk to everybody there so that's kind of how i put myself out yes. <laughs> but that's kind of how neutral ground and fluid are we're just we're sister schools because that's where my dad trained for so long before he started fluid that now we're just family yeah neutral ground is part of fluid and fluid is part of neutral ground it's just how it's always going to be I think, so. Yeah, I think one of the first times I met Brenton, he was like cleaning the mats and he was cleaning the mats with like a leaf blower. Yep. Yeah. And he was like, he was purposely blowing at me and like yep. pointing towards my direction. And I was yep. like, like, who the hell is this guy blowing this at me? <laughs> and I like, I knew who he was, but I haven't like trained with him. So I was like, oh, yeah. And of course, like all the other times when uh, he opened, uh, I guess it'd be the second fluid because you guys were in the basement right. at yeah, first. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had started, yeah, going in there. Show it up. Be like, oh, the weird cousin's in town. And he's coming by to say <laughs> hi. <laughs> no, but you have been training for how long now? Uh, I think about six and a half years. Wild. Yeah, I'm uh, 35. I started when I was, I think, 28, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. cool. Yeah, at the Neutral Ground 1.0, which was uh, in Bayview, right across the street from Rushmore Records and Hi-Fi Cafe. Like it was literally I've never pr- been there. It was probably the size of your basement, honestly. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was super small. All right. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Well, that's fun. And then you also do the kickboxing classes at Nitrogon? Yep. Um I'm on the website as coach. I guess I'm an instructor too, but the uh, it's I do classes on Fridays at uh five thirty and then Alex Gerbers, he does the classes on Monday yeah. at five thirty. Cool. I he, competed against him once. He just got his purple belt. Yeah, he yeah. did. Mm-hmm. He took me out with Ezekiel from, uh, like, bottom position, and I didn't know that was really possible. <laughs> Alex Alex is a beast. Yes, like, he he's super lanky and tall, but he's dangerous. Yeah. Like, I love training with him. Yes. But, yeah, like I said, he's he's quite the role. Yeah, he is. I, I remember it was a um, white belt submission only tournament. Oh, And, like, fun. he was in Mount doing Ezekiel, and I just rolled him over. I was like, I'll be fine. And then I was not fine. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I recall one of my first kickboxing classes with him when I got accepted into the intermediate curriculum with uh, Will Tucker, and I went against Alex. I'm like, oh, he's about the same size. I have like probably like 30 pounds on him. He just freaking like just wailed at me. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like basically doing like the child defense when like yeah. a bull. He's like doing this to them, and that's how I survived going against him. That's funny. <laughs> Yeah, uh-huh. I haven't met him. I actually don't even think I know who he is. The only reason I knew he turned purple was because, you know, on Facebook it says friends you may know. Yeah. And it just gives you, he always pops up and it's him getting his purple belt. Yeah. That's yeah. literally the only thing I know about him. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Congrats, Alex. <laughs> yeah, congrats, Alex. <laughs> anyway, so how long have you been doing the kickboxing class then? Um, Striking in general, I've been probably doing for 10 years. Yeah, I was going to um, ask because... I've seen you, well, your sparring videos, you post a lot, but also whenever we get together and we talk about striking, your style is much different than like a traditional kickboxer style. Yeah. Uh, I try to incorporate as much different types of like, it, it sounds kind of cliche, but I kind of do like the Jeet Kundo thing, um, like the yeah. interception of the fist, like the Bruce Lee style, just kind of using it more like fencing than like actual like going into like brawl cutting somebody. angles like i've gotten okay. a lot better with my footwork and cutting angles such and such but yeah i think of it as like i combine like kickboxing muay thai boxing and i do like a little bit of jeet kune do with like to just kind of get in and get out to get my thing and then just move around and try and get my points with striking hmm. yeah. that makes sense do you normally have a lot of people in your classes um 
standard, it's probably about six. Okay. So it's not terrible. Uh, they're all relatively super, super beginners. Um, they've been doing, they've been following me probably since February when I started it or restarted it. Cause I did it. I had a class before COVID and then COVID happened and then we shut it down. And then basically I restarted it back up when I got my, uh, better hours at my job so I could actually That's do true. it. Okay. Yeah. Started striking at, uh, I guess nine rounds and then oh, wow. stuff here and there. Um, just little mini boxing, like, like just kind of my own style of like learning boxing from watching videos and yeah. watching martial arts movies as ridiculous as that yeah. sounds. And then uh, obviously yeah. learning from uh, Will Tucker, who taught me a lot of my uh, stuff that I know. Josh Clark, who was he used to be in charge of Grafton's uh, kickboxing program. I'm not sure if he does that anymore. And then Tim sure. Hagen, I went to a couple of his. Um, uh, fight camp kind of classes and okay. um, with Nikita. I'm sure you guys have met Nikita before. I have met Nikita. Yeah. I don't think I have. Yes, you have. He's been at a couple of competitions. Oh, he yes. He was there for Pete's competition, too. I thought we were talking about a woman. Oh, no, no. not that one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. I remember him. <laughs> yep. Uh, so that's cool. So you've been doing kickboxing longer than jujitsu then. Yes. Is that what got you into jujitsu? Surprisingly, yeah. Um, I had moved to Bayview when I was probably like 27, 28. And I had seen like this, uh, the, the neutral ground wave logo on yeah. the side of the building and it said jujitsu, kickboxing, wrestling. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, I'm like, that sounds fun. I'm like, I'm at a time in my life where I'm like, I've always wanted to do martial arts. And yeah, I had just moved and I just nine round was in Oak Creek and like downtown Milwaukee. So I was like, well, I'm just going to throw a, my name in here and be like, Hey, like, so I called John <laughs> and I was like, Hey, like, I'm interested in kickboxing. I see you got a kickboxing class and I'd like to learn more Muay Thai, um, incorporating that into it. And he's like, well, we don't have kickboxing at Bayview neutral ground, but we do have it on the east side, but you should try a thing called jujitsu. <laughs> so, um, I was like, Oh yeah, jujitsu. Like I've heard of it. Uh, I, I remember seeing like, uh, UFC one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hoist Gracie and miscellaneous other people that kind of incorporate styles of jujitsu yep. into it. And that's, and like obviously MMA as well. So yeah. he was, I was like, Oh sure. I'll definitely do that. Yeah. I was the dude who came to class with like, um, uh, white socks, like, uh, <laughs> shorts with pockets in them. And then like, a like a competitive or not like, like, got like a training athletic tee and i like walked in and then like everybody's barefoot wearing their keys yeah. and i'm just like i don't fit this in is weird. i was like i'm wearing socks on the on this mat and i'm like doing my warm so i'm like i probably look like the hugest dork so it's pretty funny <laughs> Does Josh not, or, uh, john not allow socks on no he allowed oh, socks yeah. but it was my first day uh and he's the only one wearing socks yeah i was the only one wearing socks and so no one said hey and of course like the first guy he paired me up against was uh ricky purdy oh okay so i see this big dude and i'm like <laughs> I have to go What's against him. So for people who don't know Ricky Purdy, he's a brown belt. He's a monster. He's just jacked. He actually just uh, competed in Puerto Rico last a couple weekends ago. But he is a he's a monster. So, but you're also very large. So yeah, you I am. Have been that I was. I surprisingly, I was like 255 pounds when I started at Nutra Ground. Okay. I'm down to like a clean 220 now. Good for you. That's yeah. much better. You've been right. just keeping that weight? Yeah, I've been trying to. I mean, obviously, there's super heavyweight as anything above 225. Yeah. And I'm a fairly tall, large guy. So it, I'm sure if I really, like, would drink less beer and probably eat a little better, I could probably go down to 200. Sure. <laughs> but, yeah. But you need to be real motivated for that. Yeah. Also, like, why do you need to? What's yeah, I mean... But the purpose for that is competitively, that's why I don't really compete in jiu-jitsu that often, because, like, the last guy I went against, like... a like combat corner jujitsu competition like yeah, four years, years ago. ago. Yeah. Uh this dude was like three hundred pounds. He was oh, like God. Richard Lang, but three hundred pounds oh, and God. taller. So this guy just destroyed me and he was like mopping the floor with me. He sat on oh, my no. face and that was basically that's how he kept scoring points essentially. <laughs> and I was just like, this sucks dude. Like I gotta think of something. <laughs> Yeah, that reminds me of the last tournament where the guy took me down and then he just held me down. Yeah. <laughs> but he was like 260. Yeah, that's... Now 170. But yeah. you just competed last I did, weekend. Yeah. So we haven't done an episode in three weeks now because we've had a kind of crazy schedule for the last 
couple months, actually. It hasn't really slowed down until December. December's been nice. But yeah, so we've had a lot going on. Nick just competed last weekend in Grappling Industries in the Dells. Yes. Oh, and I did uh, Absolute Divisions for the first time. Yeah. yeah that, that was last weekend, wasn't it? Yep. That's what I keep saying, and people are like, what? And I'm like, yeah, like seven days ago. Yep. <laughs> Forever ago. But yeah, you did Absolute for the first time, which is super cool. It was super fun. Uh, <laughs> Too yeah. bad it... Uh, you weren't feeling great. I ended up not feeling good throughout the day. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and he got uh, sick like probably a day before, and he was like, "I think I can still do it." And I'm like, "Are you sure?" Was he <laughs> in too many peanut butter pretzels? <laughs> 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 no, but I brought them and I snacked on them for sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. my favorite snack. <laughs> but uh, he's like, "I can do it. I'm gonna be fine." And I was like, "Okay." Well, I had like a sore throat like a little bit, but I'm pretty sure I had the flu when I competed. Which, wow, that's pretty badass. <laughs> and also rude for your not great. <laughs> your competitors that are you're going against. <laughs> yeah, looking back at it, I probably had more sickness than I thought I did. But yeah. like I was going into it like I'm fine, I'm fine, I got this. Yeah. And yeah, then I was like, I'll just do my first I'll just do my first couple matches, see how it goes. All of a sudden I'm nine matches in and I'm like, I can't stand anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and I ended up pulling out of my fourth division for the day, which was my weight in Nogi. But um I ended up Still doing okay. I went six and three for the day, and I didn't get submitted by anybody. I only lost my points. One of them actually lost by decision, which, <laughs> which is stupid because <laughs> Scarlet Industry doesn't have advantages, and he right. totally lost by an advantage. It was so dumb. Yeah, huh. it's supposed to go into overtime when there's no points scored, and the guy held me in a triangle for like four minutes, probably. <sighs> and yeah, then, <laughs> and then the ref. Uh, I was also like dead tired at this point. This was my second to last match, and then the ref was like. Nah, no need for overtime. This guy was. <laughs> and I was like, okay, fine, whatever. Like, what is this? IBJJF rules? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Like, about, like, I really don't like the jiu-jitsu, sports jiu-jitsu point system. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I also, like, hate the stalemates. Yeah. Because there could be, like, you could literally be, like, with doing your grips with someone and just be, like... Holding them. And just holding them the whole match. And yes. then... But, I mean, I feel like in Combat Sambo and... Um, I think it's ADCC that yeah. if you get a stalemate, you or you stalemate, it's considered you get a penalty. Yes. Yeah, so that's just one of those things that it's like kind of like oh, I'm just wasting time here. Yes, just go yes. in for the freaking kill and do it. That's just how it should right. be, right. or at least take a or take transition a, or move or yeah, progress transition or, something. or move or at least go for a takedown, even if you suck at takedowns, just yes. for something. Yeah, but yeah. he he jumped. He tried to do a flying triangle. Oh, shit. And that didn't work. And then, like, I sat down into his guard, and then he put up a real triangle, and then I was literally just fighting it. And, like, for the first two minutes, I can see him, like, going for it. But then he, like, put me in a triangle again, and then it was the same cycle, and I was like, ugh. But I was so tired, I couldn't break the triangle, which is also my fault. Yeah. <laughs> but but you he couldn't, also, he you couldn't were... sweep me, and he couldn't, like... You Give were not defending armbar. it the way that you normally defend a triangle, which is how I knew you were done for the day. <laughs> like, yeah. we know, Nick knows specifically how to get out of triangles really well, because in IBJJF in April, he was put in the same scenario. He was stuck yeah. in a triangle for four minutes, and he couldn't get out. So since then, he's been drilling how to get out of it. So I knew he knew how to get out of it, and he just literally freaking sat there, and I was like, he's tired. He's done. He's not going to do any more after this. <laughs> yeah. And then I had one more match. Yeah. <laughs> And then you literally had to hold my dad's hand to get to your stool because you couldn't yeah. walk. Yes. But I brought a little stool to sit next to, uh, like, ringside or mat side, which was, like, very helpful. Yeah. Instead of standing around. But you still did great, like, for being sick, for feeling fatigued. Like, you still won six out of your nine matches, which is pretty And I got impressive. four submissions. Yeah. And nobody that's, submitted that, me. That's it's a lot more than a lot, a lot of people could say about, like, just competing and being sick as hell. Well, when they're really yeah. great, that's even though yeah. it's a hard task to get. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you went against a 260-pounder. Yes, dude, he's, one, he's one guy that I lost to. He was 260 pounds. I'm 170. And um, he tried a few takedowns, like some trips and some throws. Was he just doing muscle man throws and muscle? Yeah, yeah, he was trying to trip me and did like some hip tosses. And I would like bounce back up and try to get an angle. And then what he did is he did a bear hug and then jumped and slammed me into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and he then jumped he and my, slammed you. Yeah. A little he didn't bit. get penalized. Nope. It wasn't a slam because he got he got it and he like you know it ran oh, forward. Oh, okay. But it was but basically it not a like, slam. Can you imagine someone ninety pounds heavier just like? Slamming? I just yeah. imagine yeah. like someone just like grabbing him like belly to belly position and jumping in the air and like choke oh, slamming oh, them to rock bottoming them to the ground or not something. Not a complete jump, but there may be a point where nobody was touching the ground. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty wild. 
But then he just got in your guard and was there for the entire four and a half minutes. Yeah, and I was trying to do sweeps, and there was one point where I got under him in an X-guard, and he just, like, ran away, went straight back to guard. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> and then he was just holding me, and he was slowly talking to me. He was like, you're doing great. Good job. <laughs> Good job, kid. <laughs> but he was just up by two points the whole time, and I, I couldn't get on, out from under him. Because of that takedown. Well, yeah, the takedown gave him points, and then, yeah. Anybody being 90 pounds heavier than you, if they don't want to move, then they're not going to move. No, they won't. <laughs> I know it from experience. Like, even if someone who is, like, 170 tries to move me around, I'm just going to just lower my center of gravity and just, like, hunk it down. Yeah. Like, Dylan Martinez, when me and him spar together, he's a, sm he's a smaller dude. I think he's probably about – he has to be 170. Okay. And he's trying to, like, pick me up and do hip throws, and all I got to do yeah. is just drop my weight down, and just then, like, bit. there's no way in hell. Uh -huh. And, like, when I drop my weight down, I'm his height then. <laughs> so there's no way he's going to be able to lift me up when I'm low center of gravity <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> without yeah. any type of leverage. Exactly. So I love when Nick Bontempo, he's, uh, what is he now, like 250, 260? He's around 250, yeah. Yeah, yeah but he, he asked me every once in a while, I was like, you want to do stand-up? And I was like, is this even, like, a fair fight? <laughs> For real. He's, I was like, you have to let me take you down, because that's not going to work. <laughs> like, only if it's, like, WWE takedown style, yeah. that, like, you push him, and they're like, oh. <laughs> Yeah. So basically, I've yeah. just worked on my Grampy rolls with him, and I'll, like, do an Iminari roll into, like, a leg grab and a single leg X, and then I'll knock him down that way. That's I the only way I can take him down. I think of it, too, is um, Lily Byer. She's really good at uh, – she's smaller for AIM, too, and she always yeah. rolls with bigger dudes. And she's just, like – the thing is she has speed on them and more yes. dexterity mm -hmm. and, like, acrobatics. Mm -hmm. So she'll, like, roll out of things, like, roll around. She's – it's like – yeah. It's like trying to grab a hold of like a fish that's like in the water or something. Yeah. She's just super like super super in tune with like her body mechanics. She's one of my favorite it. rules. Yeah. We always roll together whenever we see each other and we always are like, This is such a dance, it's so fun. Yeah. Like, you're just moving. We're ne neither of us are trying to kill each other. We're just literally because we both move very similarly. Like we go upside down and we spin and we do things and we are constantly doing this instead of just being mm. like let me hunger down. Let me push you. Let me yeah. push your face. Like, we're just, we don't do that. So her and I have very fun roles together. Yeah. That's fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So speaking of competition, so that was last weekend, which mm -hmm. was fun. Um, but you've got a big competition coming up in February. Yes. Right? I am. Uh, yep. I'm doing, I'm going to Greece, uh, Athens, Greece with um, United States Pancration uh, Athlema. Uh, so. Yeah. That's I found awesome. out, yeah, I found out about this organization through Andy, Andy, well, I, John, John Friedland used to, um, Dave's son, Michael, used to train at Neutral Ground, and I think he's okay. training elsewhere now, but Dave Sixel is his dad, and he was in charge of, like, Team USA for many years of pancreation, and that was kind of like, well, it, it's MMA, but without headshots, but yes. at the same time, it's technically... I, I like MMA is like a universal term, but if you right. think about the origins of pancreation, that shit's like 348 BC. So that's older than mixed martial arts. Right. Mm -hmm. Martial arts, you, art of, you art of war. <laughs> you were a. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You were a cloak? You were a, You basically were like a. Because old pancreation, I know, you were, they were naked. naked yeah. Right? You were like a. They call it an endema, which is. It basically looks like a tunic. Like if you see like Viking shows and they have yeah. like the. Long sleeves and kind of like the cut with like the designs around it. Yeah. So it's like a tunic that you wear on your top and it's a little baggier, but it still has, you get your grips in, but it's not like a gi where you have to tie it shut. Sure, it's like sure. a shirt, like a shirt tunic. And then the pants are, they're similar to gi pants as well, but, um, I think they're like similar to the same material, but they also have like a little some, bit looser, a little bit looser, less thick, less stuff. thick, but. Yeah. So I'm pretty excited. Uh, Do you guys wear gloves with that too? Yes. Uh, MMA gloves. Shin guards? Shins, yes. Okay. So what uh, I plan on doing is I plan on doing, uh, Dave told me, he was like, hey, this is what the the things are called and I'm going to name them because there's yeah. Greek names for them and I don't want to okay. confuse anybody. But there's kato, which is grappling. So it's basically like jujitsu sure. style rules. There's agon, which is semi-contact. So that's no headshots. Okay. But uh, kicks, punches, elbows are legal. Mm -hmm. And then there's Polaris Agon, which is full contact. So that strikes to the head, uh, yeah. wearing like a uh, headgear. And mm -hmm. then there's uh, 
Palizamata, which is a self defense kind of a root, like a routine kind of a dance thing that you show as like a, oh, okay. it's like a, what they do in karate with the weapon stuff and yes. kind of like, like in a real case scenario. And then there's also the Palidamas, which is the weapons. So basically the self defense one is basically people that's flow roll essentially. Okay. They do their salutes to it and then they just kind of flow roll. Um, the weapons one, that's more, I guess, I, the way I could describe it is kind of like, you have a weapon of your choice, um, probably, if it's ancient Greek weapons, probably spears, swords, wooden stuff, yes. obviously, not real. Yes. And you just kind of do a demonstration with your tactics and your skill set. And then I think they might have, like, multiple attackers kind of come in and then it's kind of, like, a choreographed slightly. Yeah. But it's kind of like a way to kind of get people to kind of give them a show before the fights actually start. That makes sense. So I plan on doing the semi-contact, the grappling, and maybe full contacts. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. So, so how many fights is that going to be total, do you think? <laughs> Shit, I don't know. I could luck out and have, like, one other person be in, super, or be in the heavyweight division. Yeah. Or I could walk into a bunch of, like, Ukrainian, Russian, yeah. Slovak, Polish, African, European, other types of, like, countries that might be, like... 265 pound beast that I'm going to have to fight against because it's, right. it's international. Yes. Um, Dave That's was, super cool. Dave is telling me that they want to have 46 nations. Wow. All do this competition, but I wonder like how many of them are actually going to show up. Mm-hmm. Yes. And actually how many of them are going to actually be your size, be my size. Right. Um, so it's like it goes from ages 12 to 16 and then. 16 to 17, and then I believe it's adults. Okay. So they're probably going to run it like um, the kids' matches, like firstly in the morning. And then Friday, or that's going to be Friday. So it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So it's going to be three days of competing. Okay, yeah. So all I could do is, and I'm not sure what it is, if it's round robin or whatever. Right, or single elimination. Single elimination, but I'm sure if it's like Olympic style, that probably it's like you go against... Like a loser or something? Yeah, you like you win against it and then you go up to the next people and then it's kinda like how they treat the World Cup, like finals, semifinals, quarterfinals, that type of thing. Yeah. So it's nerve wracking, but it's also really exciting because yeah. uh I get to compete internationally. Mm-hmm. And uh um, yes. Dave Sixel is actually out of Wisconsin, Eagle River. I think he um For Team got, USA. Yeah, for Team USA. So I'll be wearing the Adema with the Team USA logo on the back. Nice. I'm thinking of like Writing uh, Kent Peters from Super Survival Supernatural, Jocko Willink, yeah. uh, and maybe some other, like, maybe Combat Corner, just to see if they would, like, be willing to, like, sponsor something, because it's all self-funded. Yeah. That's yeah, the yeah. thing that sucks about it. But at the same time, it's like, you know what, shit? People pay for competitions That's to go to ADCC, yeah. and then if you win, you yeah. go on to the next ones. But at the same time, it's like, well, I, I'm 35, I'm going to be 38 or 39 in four years. So this is, might be the last time I might actually have to do this or get a chance to do this. Oh, because it's a, every four years? This yeah, comes essentially. Mm. And okay. it was supposed to be prior, but with COVID happening, yeah. they kind of, there's a lot of like, well, it's going to be in Moscow. It's going to be in Brazil. It's going to uh-huh. be here. This is what I've been hearing like the last two, three years of um, kind of working with this organization because they just couldn't find who to host it. And sure. in order to qualify for it was I did the, competition in um royal court martial arts um in allenton wisconsin shout out to danny oh. campos who's also my corner man for my last fights oh cool and uh he runs that one and he does pancreation style but he's also jujitsu and uh muay thai practitioner yeah. and he competed with team usa how many years ago uh. and then i went to another seminar in louisville kentucky which is another fundraiser so i went down there with dave sixel with danny and um Greg Pumphrey, I don't know if you ever heard of him. He used to be on Human Wrecking Machines. It'd be like him and his is. brother. Him and his brother would basically go into a house and destroy it with their hands. Oh my god! And it was like a TV show. But Greg's like a freaking. He's like six foot seven, and he's a freaking beast. And he competed in um, Team USA as well. Oh wow. yeah, he has a he has a sweet video that's floating around on one of the things of him just doing like a nasty kind of sambo throw on this guy and wow. totally yeah, it's he's 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 super badass and a lot of these people that's are awesome. They have a lot of fusions with um, catch wrestling, yeah, sambo, sambo, muay thai, kickboxing, yes. um, other striking arts, other grappling arts. 
Yes. So it's like a handbag full or a grab bag full of goodies that uh, they're all bringing it to like the pancreation like yeah. banner. That's, that's super cool. cool. That was weird. <laughs> we do that a lot. But yeah, that's awesome. So that's so it's when like in married. February. That's uh, Valentine's Day. 14th through oh, the is. 22nd, I believe. Okay. All I know is I'm going to Greece for basically like nine days. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Cool thing is too, the, he got packages, so... I get food, I get breakfast and dinner part of the package nice. that I'm doing. So I'm really That's excited about that. Yep. Um, besides that, touristy stuff. Yeah. And obviously, if I'm in Greece, I got to go to Thermopylae and see where the 300 Spartans battled the Persians. Absolutely. So <laughs> I'll probably be the only one there. And I looked online and how it looks like, and it just looks like there's like, it's a freeway. Next huh. to a mountains, and that's where the battlefield was. Oh. So I'm just gonna be walking what? around this freeway like, hey, <laughs> Leonidas, people died here. <laughs> wow. Are you gonna ride a donkey up the stairs in Santorini? Maybe that'd be rad. <laughs> that poor donkey. <laughs> yeah. No, wow. that's awesome. Though. I'm excited for you. I'm excited to hear how it goes. I know you tried to get him to do it. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, I thought about it. I was like, I know, I know, I know. If if. If you're a true martial artist, you have a bank account specifically for martial arts events, correct? <laughs> or at least you have it in your savings so you yeah. can do martial arts traveling trips, or correct? Or you just incorporate yes. it into your monthly budget. Exactly. Like, uh, we're probably yeah, going to spend too. money on a gi or a competition yeah. or something this month. Yeah. So, I mean, I had put money away for this and I'm like, okay, this is what I want to do. It's either I'm going to do this or eventually I'll go to Thailand in how many years and just kind of just like train there because I would really like to do that as well. And maybe do like an amateur fight out there too. Yeah. Yes. Our Muay Thai instructor actually just got back from Thailand in November, I think. And he had a great Yeah, October. Time. Yeah. November he and was he, out there. Yeah. He brought someone from Nova. Uh, Gary Freedom. Yeah. Gary Freedom Gary. with him. Yeah. And Gary Freedom ended up fight, fighting in Thailand and he won by yeah. flying me, which is super cool. Yeah, that was fantastic. But he was sending me pictures throughout the entire thing on Snapchat, and he was, like, training in the ring with a bunch of Thailand people, and it was really cool. I'm sure the size difference was. Well, Gabe's a pretty shorter guy, too. Gabe's but compared a, to yeah. Ty's, he's probably, like, a little heavier sets. Yeah. A little? Ga- Gabe didn't fight. <laughs> I'm just trying to think, because I'm like, last time I saw him was probably when I did one of your kickboxing classes. Like, that was probably last summer now. Yeah. Yeah. You should come back. Quite a while yeah. ago. Tuesdays and like, Thursdays, six yeah, o'clock. I'm trying to get a different job so I could actually train more because I work 11 to 7 and I'm just like, oh, this is stupid. Times, yeah. yeah, like, yeah, I hate I remember this. Those days. Uh-huh. And, just like, up your entire day, you can't really get anything done. Yeah, and I got two babies now, so it's yeah. kind of hard to, like, even get up to do 6 a.m. classes. Yep. And they're at that age, too, that they could turn on you in a second, so they'll be fine, and the next thing you know, they're ah! <laughs> just screaming. And I don't want to, like, Bring that it bring that into the dojo like oh sure. Josh is here with his kids and then they're all like and then they just get pissed and just like scream sure 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 well thank you for being that yes. person because there's some people who don't do that <laughs> <laughs> uh, but how old are your babies now you just had twins not too long ago yes Grayson and Layla uh five months uh, or no adorable. four months four months yeah their adorable. names are Grayson and Layla yeah that's crazy. So, Those are two names that we picked up. Yeah. Oh, really? Possibly. So we're not planning yeah. on having kids. We're not planning on having kids. But uh, We have a name list. We do have case. a name list. Yeah, because you never know. And actually, like, if I literally pull it up right now, you'll see those two names on there, which yeah, is kind of crazy. Cool. Yeah, I, I, I <laughs> went, we can't name our kids that anymore. <laughs> I went Grayson because, uh, obviously, Nightwing from Batman mm-hmm. or Robin, the first Robin. Okay. Layla, um, it means of the nights, and it's also a pretty good Clapton song. So Okay. It's not from... Never mind. That's Leia. <laughs> yeah, Leia's from Star Wars. Well, I mean, they are twins, so eventually they'll probably have to do a Luke and Leia costume. Like, right? And I'll have to be Vader or something. Yeah. That would be awesome. <laughs> that oh sounds great. Oh, my gosh. And then your wife is going to be Natalie Portman? <laughs> yeah, hopefully she, um, like, does it, don't, d- does it pass away in the process when she's yelling at me and yeah, whoever my that. Obi-Wan Kenobi is. <laughs> I don't even think I have an Obi-Wan Kenobi. Oh, uh, yeah. I need an Obi Wan Kenobi in my life. <laughs> Who could be that, John Friedland? Yeah, just commit John. Ah, uh, John's more of a Han Solo. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard what we uh, really want to name our first son? I'm sorry, we. <laughs> Did you just say we? Yep. Hey. I take that. No, I didn't mean that. <laughs> okay, his first name is to be Brock. His middle name is to be Cole. So say that. Brock. Last name. What's our last name. Broccoli. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you take out the Cole, it still ends up being. Lee broccoli, broccoli. <laughs> yes, broccoli. Oh, that or took broccoli. me way too long to understand. <laughs> like broccoli. 
<laughs> no, yeah. No, our kid's name will not. That will not happen. We're going to have a broccoli, probably. No, we're not. I always liked really, I really liked like Latin names and like Germanic names. Okay. But yeah. like Uften, like Brumhilda, like Ela, Athelwolf. And I was like, ah, that's a little too much. I'll just keep it simple. I think that's mm. fun, though. Yeah. I feel like people are coming up with more and more unique names now. Why don't you get another, we can get another dog. It can be a boy and then you can name him Brock. We'll get another big, giant, stocky dog. Like Doesn't Starlet. have the same effect. Yes, I does. really want a principal to call broccoli to the principal's office no, on this then, box speaker one day. Because I was saying, like, when <laughs> kids graduate, college at least, like, they say the full name. So, like, yeah, can you so imagine Brock our Lee. freaking 22-year-old graduating college and be like, Brock Cole Lee? It's, it's a long <laughs> Like, walks joke. down. Ugh, no. And then, of course, you'll be, you'll, you'll see Nick like, hey! <laughs> 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 not yep. happening. Nick will probably show up in his gi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a so we one. were out to eat yesterday, and there was this kid. She had to have been, I think she was nine, and she was literally laying down on the stairs, oh screaming, God. crying, throwing a fit. And we had walked like through the corner, and she was just yelling at her dad. And she's like, "You're hurting me!" And he, she looks right at us, and she's like, "He's hurting me!" Like trying to tell us she's getting abused. And I was like, "Yeah, okay." And the dad is just laughing. He goes, nine year olds, right?" And I was like, "Whatever. Your kid is more." Birth control for me than I ever needed. <laughs> and so then we go back upstairs and Nick and I were talking about it. And we're like, you know, if we had a kid, I don't think it would ever act like that because they wouldn't know what real pain is like. Like we would actually put them in jujitsu kimuras all the time because they would have to know that kind of pain. And then they wouldn't get hit, but they'd just get submitted well, over and over. Yeah. <laughs> I'd always do that too. Uh, what was it? Um, we would call it the clean your room kimura, which would be like the standing kimura that yeah. um, was it uh, a Christmas uh, story? Uh, Takashi Sakuraba would would do okay. Um, he would just like when he would like face the Gracies, he would just stand up and just like basically like push him against <laughs> him, like the ring and like yes. I think that's how Henzo got his or Renzo got his like arm broken from that like type of Kimura. Okay, but yeah, yeah, but that's what you have to do to kids. You yeah, <laughs> like you want to know what your arm really feels like when it's getting hurt. Here we go. Yeah, and yeah. but then we said, well, we'd have to just put it in a gi all the time. So when it's just laying in the middle of the staircase, throwing a fit, you just pick it up by the collar and I'm like, stop <laughs> it. <laughs> and then we imagine our child going to school in a gi. Yep, by themselves, only show and tell. Gi. Yep. <laughs> I don't yeah. know our nine year old would not behave like that. <laughs> He'd be perfect, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah. We'll see if we have kids. Ugh, I don't want to. We were just at my holiday Christmas party on Friday night, and they were all talking about their kids, because you know that's what you talk about with your coworkers, like, how are the kids doing? How old are they now? How are they doing in school? Like that kind of crap. And we're probably the only two there without children. Yeah. And yep. so it was, like, really hard to relate. Everyone in her office is, like, 50. Yeah. And she's 27. So, yeah. So <laughs> She's 27. Like, there's <laughs> that pause there. <laughs> but we just couldn't relate. And they were all talking about, like, the ones with younger kids. They'd be like, oh, and they were just, like, screaming and crying and doing this. And I'm like, you're not selling it to me. I don't want them. <laughs> yeah, but I think of it as, like, it may be temporarily like at the moment but once you see them and you see yourself in them it's yeah. like it's a lot more you have that instinct of like oh you're pissed off and angry as shit right now but you're still fucking adorable and that's <laughs> just kind of how i look at them like that's what it seems like i wake up and like check on my kids in the morning in their crib and they'll just be like <laughs> yeah just smiling at me and i'll be like ah. <laughs> look i don't care you're cute yeah <laughs> that's adorable yeah no so switching off of kids, um, what is your preparation like going into Greece? Oh, yeah, that's the thing, man. Um, working a job, it just having yeah. last lack of time for training. Um, I train wherever I could. I'm trying to supplement more strength training. Okay. So I'm doing a, like, doing a lot of full body workout with dumbbells. Uh, in the summer, unfortunately, I, or, it's winter, yeah. and unfortunately, I, I run, like, all the time in the summer. Okay. I'll, like, do two miles, like, running, and then I'll be like, oh, I can do another two miles. Oh, sure. And then I'll do another I've two miles. I've never had that thought. <laughs> yeah, like, I just, I have that, I, I'm wired... I'm wired like an addict, so it's like, oh, I could do this. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to keep doing this. It's just kind of like this. <laughs> That's a great spirit talking to me. <laughs> like, Don't drink. So I'm not drinking. Um, I'm probably doing only drinking on my my days off. 
Sure, um, so sure. maybe like one or two days, and I just even have like three seltzers and a beer. Sure. Uh, besides that, a lot of cardio. That's pretty good for Wisconsin. Yeah, I'm going. I told my kickboxers, I'm like, all right, guys, I'm not trying to be mean, but I'm going to be going harder. Yeah, but I'm yep. not, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm just I'm right. going to be turning up the heat because I need to get ready for yeah, this. like technique wise. Yeah, because I don't really have anybody that's at my level of like striking sure. at neutral ground. If I do, I think it's Alex. Sure. But even then, I have to like. Get off of time. work early and go yeah. in there. I yeah. think you should really talk to Gabe, honestly, because he goes and spars with a couple of our guys, like, once or twice a week. And, like, they'll just go off. It's the middle of the afternoon, yeah. so I know you work 11 to 7, but he would probably find some time to, like, actually go harder with you. And because he is heavier set, he's probably, like, better for yeah, you to go against. Yeah, good comp. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I'll keep that in mind. Besides you know Garrick, that. Huh? You know Garrick? He goes. He's kind of newer. Yeah, he's a, he's one of our white belts, but he's he's been going with him a lot, too. So. Okay. Yeah, um, besides that, like Dylan, uh, Dylan Martinez, he's a good striker. He's out of primal in the neutral ground as well. Yeah. Um, and, uh, John Sanchez, he's actually been, yeah. uh, my big buddy with helping that because he is pretty, he's really good at boxing. Um, okay. his, uh, he's really getting good at more of like using like legs and stuff. And his jujitsu, we're probably at the same level of our jujitsu. Yeah. So nice. when we go to the ground, well, I'll be like, hey, man, you want to go, like, a couple of rounds or something, like, after kickboxing? Yeah. So, me and him will throw on the MMA gloves, and then we'll just, like, start going at it with each other. That's nice. Um, and yeah. you and Bon Tempo do that, too, yeah. which, role, which is cool. Mm-hmm. That, and then besides that, like I said, Dylan, me and Dylan did, like, a combat sample kind of thing, like, two weeks ago. We had our gee tops on and just, like, our yes. shorts. And then we were That's just, like, fun. doing that and trying to do our takedowns as well. But, like I said, like, Dylan's, like, 30, 40 pounds lighter than me. So sure. there's, there's it's, a big it's, difference. it's kind of unfair. He's, yeah. he's very good though. And he has a huge gas tank, but at the sure. same time, it's like, it's not at the level that I need to be when it comes to like weight wise. Exactly. Cause it's like, I can pick him up and throw him around, but how is that beneficial to my game? Exactly. If I'm like picking up people that are like so much smaller than me and throwing them yeah, it's for not someone sharp. who's like bigger. It's not sharpening the tools that you yeah. need to be sharp. Yeah. Hmm. That makes sense. So you're going to be changing your eating habits then too? Uh, I, I eat relatively cleaner. Um, I, I probably should, like, I went on whole 30 for, uh, after my, f- my first, uh, or my, what I'm going to say my third fight, uh, at uh, the primal, primal one. Uh, it's basically like you just cut out sugar, added sugar. Uh, you cut out sugar, you only eat vegetables and meats. And it's like a very, it's, it's like it's similar to, I guess, paleo. I okay. think I'm not, I'm not a nutritionist, so please don't judge me, whoever's watching this. <laughs> but it's just like you're eating cleaner and they have these recipes, but you could tell like your body starts getting rid of, uh, you don't, no alcohol. Mm-hmm. So your body starts getting rid of that. You could kind of see like your energy and kind of awareness as well, kind of sharpen when you're doing that. Yeah. But it's worth a try. I mean, the thing is like my wife is in school. I have two kids, um, yeah. and I'm using excuses and procrastination for not eating cleaner, but it's the thing, it's, it's hard to like, it's like, okay, what are we going to eat today for dinner? But it it's always hard. a process. Because when you want to eat clean, it's typically you want like cleaner and fresher vegetables and fruits and things in the house. Yeah. And that takes a lot of one shopping and two preparation. And yes. so to eat like super healthy all the time, it does require a lot of work. And Whereas, a lot of like, planning. It's so yeah. much easier to just be like, I don't feel like cooking tonight. I'm going to go make a packaged box of ramen. Yeah. Like it's just easier to do that. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, that's it's me. totally me, man. I almost did that last night, but I had a can of corn instead. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, my sister's a really good cook. Uh, she always like uh, when we were having the kids, she would drop off like dinner and dinners for us, and she would make. My mom's a pretty good cook. Corey's a really good cook too. I'm pretty, I'm pretty decent. I'm not special, but I always like I love messing with like. Um, Indian style dishes. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I love making like curry dishes, like heavily curry. Indian's um, not that healthy though. I have learned now that it's I mean, yeah, there's a lot of probably there. fats, like, yeah, mm-hmm. oils. Tastes delicious, <laughs> but it's not great for you. <laughs> but, I mean, let's say compared like to eating like a greasy burger, like sure. a pack of cheese curds or something. I or mean, ramen. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean. Ramen's fine as long as you don't add the whole package of seasoning and you do maybe a cut of the seasoning for the sodium because it's like a thousand is? sodium or something like milligrams. <laughs> do you want to know what, what he adds to his ramen on two top of the seasoning? Cream cheese? No. no. You should try it though. That it's sounds good. good. <laughs> <laughs> no, why don't you tell him? I add in uh, soy sauce, 
hoisin, uh, cayenne pepper, a lot of cayenne pepper, but then I also add in uh, a nice squirt of ranch. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, you got all your food groups right there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't understand. It makes it a little creamy, but also adds in like a good like burst of flavor, and it's like Asian, but it's like... There was that one time that you put like mayo on the Asian dish, and ever since then, I always want creamy Asian food. But I'm just from, I'm just a Wisconsin Asian man. I was gonna so. say, I was like, yeah, there's a uh, Midwestern coming out, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I get the soy sauce and the hoisin though, because when we go out for pho or ramen, like you definitely That's put that put in, in there. But when you put ranch in there, I just thought you were wild. It's thing too, like kind of like heavier cream, like cream, like sour cream. Like sometimes I'll do, uh, I call it like quick eggs. So I'll basically put like a drop of like sour cream and like eggs and I'll put it in like just a normal kettle and then I'll just kind of stir it, take it off, stir it, take it off. So it's like a creamy egg. Okay. Okay. And it's really good. It's just, it kind of gives it a zip. And then I add, I always add like kimchi to it mm. just to make mm. sure we're keeping that gut biome regulated. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, and I don't know. I mean, I've been that eating a lot great. more like leaner meats lately, uh, more turkeys, maybe mm-hmm. super lean beef, if that's. Yeah. We don't have ground beef. We only do ground turkey. Yeah. yeah. For the most part. I very, very, very seldomly like, cook with ground beef. Yeah. Even when we have burgers, I try to make it with turkey. Yeah. For yeah. the most part. But yeah, everything that I make, like if it requires ground beef or anything, I normally substitute it for ground turkey. And then I'm always trying to do the fresh vegetables and. I try it. When we're on competition diet, I go a little bit harder on it. Otherwise, I really... Which happens to be like every other week at right. this point. Yeah. We yeah. do it all the time. But we try... I Okay, so I've always said I hate the word diet because I feel like it restricts people and it puts them in a box. It, it's a mindset that people go yeah. into. Like, I have to go on a diet. Like, yeah. Where it's a word it's just that's like, specifically for... Exactly. That. Yeah. Yes. So portion yourself. <laughs> yeah. Make it smaller portions. You can still eat what you want and enjoy. You don't have to cut out creams and pastas, but like just minimize how much you're intaking. If you're eating a giant plate of pasta that's full of cream and cheese, like yeah, that's not good for you. But if you have it as just like a little fist sized side, like that's fine. And this is also interesting too, because it's like genetics have a play in it too. Because mm-hmm. I remember like yeah. my third fight uh for primal, I went against uh Michael Sag or Gabe Sag, whatever his name is. Okay. And like, I was like kind of being cleaner, like eating and just like doing things. And then I had two friends come down from Sheboygan and Madison. Yeah. So like, of course they're having wine and drinking beer. And I'm like, I have a tomorrow. fight tomorrow. And then yeah. I'm like, Oh, I could have one glass of wine. And then one glass of wine became two. And then oh, okay. two became three. And then I had like two more beers and I woke up and I was like, well, shit, that was stupid. <laughs> and then I went and then I won my fight and I was like, well, it was all right then, I guess. <laughs> um, obviously, skill too with whatever. Sure. He, he yeah. was the dude that I went against. wasn't much. He, he didn't grapple as much. He was okay. more of a striker. So I think that's probably what played in my favor. And then my yep. one that I t- did back in November two thousand twenty-one. Um, I forget his name, but that one was that one was a bad one. And I was like going into. I I was all right. First off, this is stupid. <laughs> all right, so. This is leading up to it. I Chris Martin contacted me to do a catch wrestling match, and then I went against Talon and then Dan Almario. Talon's a great grappler. Dan's a pretty good wrestler. And so, really quick, what's what's catch wrestling? It's basically like submission wrestling or submissions with pins. Okay. Yes. But the problem with CAC or catch as you can is um, there's more pain submissions. So literally, if I wanted to take and crank the shit out of your neck, that's legal. If I wanted to crank the shit out of your arm, that's legal. Okay. But obviously, most of us, the people that I went against, it was a triple threat uh, match, so I would tag them in and it would kind of go. We ended up, um, all of us were pretty, I think we're all jujitsu people, so our centric fighting was um, jujitsu. Talon does a lot of sambo, too, so he kind of incorporated a lot of that stuff. But, I mean, he didn't have any gi to grab onto, so he just basically was just throwing me and just kind of doing his sweet, like, fancy takedowns. And then I got I got leg locked, and then I didn't tap, and then I then I basically, I, I heard, like, oh, okay. and, like, kind of, like, the feeling of, like, what a water balloon sounds like when you, like, bend it past its pressure, like, uh, yep. Yep. and then I was, like, and then I grabbed it, and then I thought, I was, like, there's something wrong with my leg, and I was just telling myself. And then... We restarted at the center because I grabbed on the rope, and then I ended up 
lose it to rear naked choke, not even like a minute later. So it wasn't fucking worth it. Yeah. And then yes. um, I still went against, since Talon beat me, uh, him and Dan went at it, and then he beat Dan. And then I went against Dan as to see who would ever be second place. Yeah, and then yeah. me and him ended up drawing. And I told him, I was like, dude, my leg's fucked up. Just yeah. so you know. And he was yeah. like, all right, dude, I'll try and do it. But he's wrestler guy, so sub submissions. He was more like just, he threw me like so many times. Sure. Dan's, Dan's a big boy. Sure. I don't know who he is, but. But on top of that, speeding up what I was saying. um, Yeah. My leg was injured. Uh, it was like purple, purple toes, purple behind my knee. Oh, purple on there, and I was like limping around. That's the same time, coincidentally, that I went to that um, that seminar in Louisville. It was like oh, a week okay. after that. So I did that, and then I got back from the seminar, and I called uh, Scott for Primal. I was like, "Hey, man, do you got anybody for me?" Oh, okay. And he was like, "Oh yeah, I, I was just I was just gonna ask you if you wanted to compete." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, let's put me in because my leg just healed." And I was like, I need to go and compete right away. I lost. Oh, sure. I need to go and compete. Just that dumb mentality. Yeah. <laughs> and then I went in there. I've had that. And um, dude was a really great striker and grappler and uh, ended up going against it. And then I got my arm dislocated oh. and I lost yeah. that match at Primal. With your arm dislocated? No way. <laughs> yeah. Did you, did you tap, though, to the, the arm bar? Or? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did it. Yes. We uh, had this discussion before. It was stupid. Yeah. I thought I was going to get out. I was walking across the cage, but I have a freeze picture of me on my Heel of the Thunderer uh, Instagram, and it's like, <laughs> and then hit the guy. It's like, it's a perfect angle for the arm bar. And he's okay, looking at yeah. me, and he's like, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and I remember looking down my like sights, and I see Nick like, because <laughs> oh, no. Nick uh, Te- yeah. on Temple was my corner man. And yes. then as soon as it happened, I was like, shit. And then I got up, went back into place instantly. And then oh, I was right. like, I'm fine. This this is fine. Fine. I'm fine. <laughs> and then, uh, it was a like captain. Um, yeah, the ref. Yeah, the ref, uh, was like, all right. He's like, that's done. Yeah, the other guy won. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh, uh, thanks. And then, so, of course, PT's checking me out. They're like, you probably just dislocated it. So all I could tell you is ibuprofen and ice. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. I was almost out of it, though. Should I have tapped earlier? Yes, I should have. Yeah. Always tap, kids. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be an idiot. I learned that the hard way, too. There was one match I had where I got um, caught in, like, an arm bar, and I thought I could roll out of it. And I ended up hyperextending. It popped a couple times. And then I did tap. He ended up winning because I tapped. But then I, I was out for, like, a couple months just because mm-hmm. I had to heal my arm. And I was like, I should have fucking tapped. Yeah. yeah he when rolled up, like, it. his arm and his belt for a couple months because he couldn't do it. I remember you were very upset after that match. Yeah, that was I was still a blue belt, and I was um, in the mentality, almost like you said, that you can't ever lose, and you have to go right back to like redeem yourself. Yeah, it's a it's a hero story. Yes, <laughs> yes. So now yeah, I, I see a fun. bigger picture nowadays, but I feel what you what you felt. I'm just saying, um, there is another catch wrestling thing probably coming up in march at crusher fest in south milwaukee you should do it because i think you would enjoy it and yeah. i mean you'd be a good baby face because what chris wanted to uh orchestrate was basically <laughs> heel versus baby face that, yeah. so i went into the catch wrestling thing talking shit to dan and talent on like social media okay. just to like try and get more people to come in engagement yeah yeah and like totally it was like a lot of people were like, wow, Josh is a real asshole. And I was just like, no, 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 dude. It's, it's, I'm playing a role. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm creating a character. And so I would just you like talk. Me, it's like my video is probably floating around on there, but I'm just like talking trash about like Dan and Talon. Yeah. And then they're like, what the hell? And Talon knows me. And he's just like, I would have drop him on his head. What the hell? <laughs> what the hell did do you think you could talk to me that way? <laughs> so it became like a whole WWE thing. So Oh, that's fun. So we were just shit talking to each other on social media. And then the yeah. came and you know what? A lot of people were like, people inboxed me. They're like, yeah, kick his ass. I don't like that guy. And I'm like, <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm like, playing, but that seems kind of real from you. Yeah. Man. I was like, dude, it's like, I felt like saying it's all play. Like it's fun. So I'm just saying if it's, it's there, you <laughs> we'll check it out. I mean, Huh. You win by pinfall, the three hold down, or you win by submission. And I'm sure that Chris could get a matchmaker for you to get someone in your weight. Maybe you could go against your uh, your buddy Seth, yeah. Seth Leon, because he did it with me um, in the 
uh, 180 weight division. Okay, yeah. And then the three of us being the heavyweights that we were there, so. It seems terrifying to compete at heavyweight. But it's cool because it's like a wrestling ring. And then yeah. Nick is such a like wholesome guy is what I've noticed. So I think he'd be a good thing like, you yep, know, you know I'm just going to I'm just gonna go in and give it my 100% <laughs> yeah. and win. And then the person who's going to be the heel is like, I'm going to kick the shit out of him, <laughs> yeah. motherfucker. Like, <laughs> so it's just fun because yep. it's like you're creating that. So got to do that. It was GLCW kind of promotion thing. So Great Lakes Championship Wrestling. They okay. went on and it was professional wrestling after us. Okay. And it's in the South Milwaukee Center, so by the Crusher statue, so it's a lot of fun. I think in, March, totally worth- in March we're talking about going to Pans, though. In Yeah, Florida. IBJJF Pans. But in what if Florida. Nick becomes so great that he can become a professional wrestler, and it could be like New Japan Shoot Wrestling. Do you even <laughs> like wrestling? Um... I mean, you like scrambles, but like, do you like wrestling? You talking about like pro wrestling or like <laughs> Olympic wrestling? Just in general, there's there's still a difference, but yeah, wrestling's fun. I just like grappling. Yeah, I just love being on the mats in general. Actually, yeah, that's <laughs> why I think I'm gonna tell myself I want to consistently like do as much competition as I can. Um, that's not necessarily like jujitsu, sport jujitsu, but this, I'm thinking of doing like a primal submission uh, only one Are later you doing that on Saturday. No, I'm not. I have not signed up for it. Uh, I'm still trying to... My wife's in school right now, so I'm trying to kind of still be a good dad and a good parent and a good husband. Overrated. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that. And so that I try to maybe try and do like a combat Samo thing. I don't think they come around Milwaukee ever. So yeah, why don't you I haven't start seen one? anything. Yeah, <sighs> might, you know, it might be. Talent, if you're watching this, let's make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's cool. <clears throat> yeah, so is there any competitions that you're thinking of doing before you go to Greece just to, like, refresh how it is to compete? Or are you um, good on that aspect? The thing that I think I need to do is I need to channel that killer instinct. I'm a relatively nice person, so it's kind of hard yes. to get into that mentality of... Yeah. Yes. So that's just probably... And, you know, with my hormones being messed up with the children now, I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> like little things could set you off when you're crying or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. I just kind of got to channel that. But I don't think I'm going to do it just because I'm in fear that I'm going to hurt myself. Okay. And then I might not be good to compete. So I'm that trying to stay sense. at least 100% before yeah. I actually go to Greece. Yeah. That's one thing I talk about often. Um, you got to build like a competition switch that you can flip on and off. So that way, you know, when it's time to fight, you're just in fight mode. But then... It's also hard to come out of that if you're not good at, like, controlling your emotions or controlling your mind. If you compete and then you come out of that and you're off the mats and you're still in that mode, that's not healthy. Yeah, it's like that warrior instinct. And it's just – it's crazy, too, because, like, seeing you go against Seth at that primal thing, I was like, damn, dude, this is – this looks vicious. (laughs) They're they're beating the shit out of each other. (laughs) They're doing it. (laughs) It may not be headshots, but they're still, like – yeah, submissions were deep. The freaking strikes were hard. You could hear everything just – the claps and the hits, so <laughs> yeah. I was that was a good time. During that pain creation. <laughs> yeah. That was rough. <laughs> but yeah, it's just probably trying to channel that, so I'm like, I don't even know uh-huh. how to do that. Yeah, I use meditation for that specifically in order to just control my mind in general. And I'm always um believing that my body's gonna follow my mind. So if I can control it, put myself in that mode, let myself, you know, whatever savagery come out during that point, but also be smart and technical. And then bring it back and then still be the baby face nice guy that you know. Yeah. <laughs> right afterwards. Like Seth and I are friends now. We react to each other's stuff on Facebook all the time. It's, it's cool. Yeah. Same thing with my last Pancration opponent. We're friends now, even after the controversy. Yeah, I was uh, I was talking to him uh, before your fight. And he's like, oh, so how is Nick? I was like, he's pretty good, man. Like, be, be on it. He was like, really? Just he's Seth? like, do you know a lot of... Uh, talking about yeah. Pal or Seth? Seth. Okay, okay. yeah, yeah. And I was, because I chat with him here and there whenever I see him at, like, yeah. competitions or uh, if he goes to, like... And you said he was basically on your team at the catch wrestling? Yeah, it was, um, he was, he was, he was one of the competitors on oh, sure, the, sure. S- s- the lower weight divisions. Yeah. But he, yeah, I, he was just like, oh, yeah, like, I was like, how do you know Nick? I was like, oh, I, I try and train at Fluid here and there. It's kind of like we're... We're pretty close, neutral ground influence. He's like, oh, really? Yeah. And I was kind of like saying, yeah, Nick's really good. I mean, he's, he could, he, he, his jujitsu is great and his strike is pretty good. And he was like, oh, really? <laughs> and <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, great. like, I'm like trying to plant that, like, seed in the mentality of like, uh. But people yeah. tell him that all the time. Like, when he goes against new people at grappling industries, they have said, they're like, I've looked at your record and it's very intimidating, man. Like, you have over 50 <laughs> wins and that's really scary. <laughs> 
And then the dude yeah. who had him in a triangle for four minutes, he told him, he was like, you are my toughest match of the day. And Nick is like, I just freaking sat there for like four minutes. Okay, yeah. that's cool. <laughs> yeah. I always yeah. feel too, it's like, I feel sometimes better just to keep your mouth shut when it comes to like whoever, especially yes. if it's your friend or if they're not necessarily your friend, but they're acquaintance and you're like kind of plant that seed of like, well, he's pretty good. Right, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I just kind of like, because I think it was it, I think when Dave fought that day um, against um, that D1 Tristan. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I was like, I t- I'm telling you, dude, like he's a really good wrestler. It might, your jujitsu might be able to catch up with him, but he's a white belt in jujitsu. I think at the time when I rolled with him, he was. Right. But his wrestling is top notch, man. Yeah. He may not yeah, know like, his basic like missions, but if this man knows some submissions later on, he's going to be dangerous. Mm-hmm. And then Dave was like, okay. <laughs> and I was like, shit. I'm like, I'm not trying to like sabotage anybody, but I'm just being honest. Right. Yeah, but, I don't know if yeah, it's like a, a good or a there. bad thing to know yeah. more about your opponent before going in. Because like you said, it can kind of put that seed of doubt in your head where you're just like, oh, whoa, is my is my stuff as good as their stuff? Or Yeah, yeah it's that de- when in, like that doubt. Yeah, but what really. Nick, what Potempo says is like you got at the end of the day, like they're only flesh and blood and yeah. yes. they might have a skill set, but just at the end of the day, it's a fight and win. Yeah. We always say instead of good luck to our opponents, we always say good skill. Because yep. you just have to trust your jujitsu at that point. It's like you're you've trained all that you can up to this point, so there's no luck involved. It's just what you've put into the mat is going to show on the competition mat, honestly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so there's no luck; it's skill. Yeah, I always tell people not to look up your opponents. You want to be surprised, but you don't want to over or underestimate anybody. You want to do your best in that moment, regardless of who your opponent is and what their skill level is. Mm-hmm. As long as you do your best, you can't fault yourself for your competition based on other people. Yeah, and I'm thinking too, like going into that last one I did at Primal, um, I didn't really know anything about the guy. Sure, um, yeah. the first one I did though, I, I looked in the, I looked at the guy's MMA record and he had fights on YouTube. So I was just oh, like, okay. okay, this is the type of like striker he is. So I just sure. got to watch it and then yeah. tactically, tactically dismantle them essentially is what I yes. try to do. And it makes sense more in that field where you have one fight against one person and it's a few rounds. And you can, like, pick up on their style and figure it out. Mm -hmm. But, like, at tournaments where you don't even know who you're going up against, if you just, like, start researching everybody, it's, I think, it harms you more than it may help you. Yeah. But, yeah. It's fun, though. Like I said, I just want to go into my mid-30s and late-30s still practicing jiu-jitsu and obviously getting more mad time. And Yeah. That's just uh, the plus about it. And, like, I used to train probably three or four days a week and now i'm down to one if i'm lucky okay that's sure. why i try to make them as much as i can yep going wherever mm-hmm. absolutely but yeah, i'm still not trying to put a wrench in the gears of my household because i want to still be a supportive person and because i can imagine like my wife she's a an electrician and she's still in school and okay, she yeah. has twins and yes yeah so and she's she's super supportive and i very much appreciate that i couldn't ask okay. for anyone better in my life for that yeah that's great to hear yeah Going back to, to the uh, what we were just talking about, though, about researching your opponent or possibly not researching your opponent. So one of our guys at Fluid, his name is Ian. He just competed. And something that we always do after we compete is on our team page, we always write down our top five takeaways that we got mm-hmm. from our matches, whether they were great or bad. Yeah. And that way you always come out learning something. And one of the things that stuck out to me was his first one was use what you know about the other person. Like, if you know them, then use what you can do against them. And if you don't know them, be ready to be on your A game for what they might pull out. But the thing that he said that I really appreciated was use your plan as a guide, not a rule. Because think yes. about when someone reads something off a script versus when they improvise. The script always sounds monotone, and often people stutter because they want to follow the script exactly. Then when someone improvises something, it comes smooth and sounds very well prepared. The same goes for your jujitsu. Plan for what you want in your role, but be flexible to taking the scenic route to get there. Okay. So I thought that was a really good take on that. He's 16. Yes, yeah, 16. Uh, was, that's pretty, pretty <laughs> yeah. well-written. Uh, well Well-written yeah. for that. And I mean, you yes. probably, I think it's easier probably to just write it down and think about it and let it sit maybe like 24 hours and then you put yes. it on paper or online. Yes. But yeah, I mean, the thing I could say about the last three competitions is like, I was really happy with my performance against um, my first primal MMA fights. Yeah, was really happy with that because I won by rear naked choke, and that's what that's I wanted to great do. Feeling. Um, yes. The thing that I, this the catch wrestling thing, 
I'm pretty sure I gave Dan and Talon a run for their money because I just kept moving and That's kept good. trying to evade them. People don't know yeah. what to do when you keep moving. It's great. Like, if you just keep going, they're like, stop it! Yeah. I was rolling with Josh Posey from Open Guard, and I was just flipping and moving and jumping and going all over, and he was just like, you're so movie! Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. The, the last one with uh, injury that I received was... I know that I got an injury and I lost because I was a fool and was stubborn. But at the same time, I knew I put some freaking bruises on that guy's leg. Yeah. Good. Because if you see, if you w- look back and watch those fights, you could see and hear those kicks and you can yeah. see them like, mm, like. I love that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> when you do that to someone, they're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> but don't doubt yourself. Like I said, just trust your, I mean, in your case, it was your kickboxing or your Muay Thai, whatever yeah. you want to call it. But like, just trust your skill and just go out there and do what you can. And Yeah, do your best. You'll learn from it no matter That's- what. That's that's the most important part I think of competing ever is if you do your best and the other person still wins like you still did your best what what more can you do mm-hmm. but if you find yourself like clouded in judgment or second guessing yourself in the middle of a match or like I don't know if I want to do this indecisive just in general you're probably going to lose based on you just not um being you know in tune 100% with yourself and just doing what you can in that moment I was sick of two of that um one video I posted on my Instagram, and when I said strike, take down, fail, take down, fail, or whatever, and yeah. I was just kind of making fun of myself. What yeah. I, what did you say? It was like every takedown that you like, you don't, miss every takedown you don't try. Yeah, you miss every yeah. Take, takedown you don't try. And I was like, oh, you know, that's right. Even if it looked shitty on my part, hey, you don't always say try it. That's right. <laughs> That's why you should have a backup plan. Yeah. Like, you have your A game, but then you always have your second, third, and fourth thing that you can do from there. Yeah. I always tell myself when I do these, like, fights and stuff, and I'm like, all right, my jiu-jitsu is eventually going to save me. That's just <laughs> what I tell myself. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's more than just saving. It's it's There's a philosophy behind it, too. So Agreed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. the You miss every takedown you don't shoot is basically the same as, like, the Wayne Gretzky quote, you miss every shot you don't take. Yeah. <laughs> Which still it works because you shoot in wrestling, so <laughs> same thing. But but yeah, if you never try, if you never go for it, you'll never even know if you if it was possible or not. I mean, some things obviously are impossible, but now I'm getting too philosophic. <laughs> That's not a word. Yeah. Philosophical, posthumously. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Did you have any last minute thoughts? I'm really excited to hear about your fight in February, though. Um. Not really. Uh, I thank you for having me on this. I know it's been kind of, I've been always wanting to just like I've spread the word of. Out here too. Huh? I've always wanted to have you on yeah. the podcast too. Yeah. 79 spread, episodes later. <laughs> yeah, spread the sport of like jujitsu, pancreation, striking, martial grappling, arts. just martial arts in general. Yeah. And just kind of do it because a lot of people like, they see it on TV and then you got those people like, ugh. Whatever he should have knocked him out, and like these are the people that don't know anything about fighting. Mm -hmm. Yes, or when people boo and UFC, it pisses me off every time because I'm like, you don't know anything. Yeah, (laughs) so that's just the part that I just kind of think of it. It's like everybody. uh, My final thoughts is everybody should try martial arts and they should do it. If you don't like it, then you don't like it. I got my nibbling and my nephew in martial arts. They train at neutral ground, so they're pretty pumped. I coached my nibbling Mars. Their first competition at uh, Neutral Ground West Bend, and they yeah. got second place, and That's I was awesome. proud. And then I yes. went on to coach um, my, two of my kickboxers for uh, the their jujitsu cool. the scrimmage. Awesome! That's very cool. I love to hear that. Mm-hmm. I know I love getting the kids involved. I actually think I just convinced my coworker to get her two kids and her husband. Your husband would actually be a really good size for you. He he's was, also 260 pounds. Yeah. He's a personal <laughs> trainer, so he's jacked. Nice. Oh, those muscle Worst. mans. <laughs> yeah. But, yes. Yeah, I love watching the kids progress, too. Yeah. They I don't really have a lot of skill, but... <laughs> even if you're, like, the person that's solely responsible for their, like, philosophical and them, like, you're the person that's telling them how to strike, how to grapple or whatever, that's also, like, my favorite thing about the sport, too, because it's, like, you see them. Like, yeah. if you take my kickboxers in February and you kind of see where they are now, I'm like, damn, this is, like, yes. this is real progression. Yeah. Obviously, it comes down to them, like, right. wanting to learn more and, and listen when I'm like, don't throw a lazy, like, groundhouse kick or yep. put your hips into your strikes. Yep. Yes. Telling Little tips and do, tricks everywhere. Yeah. Do fight stands and how to actually like extend your elbow when you're <laughs> throwing a punch. I know one of the things that I teach the kids, cause we teach the kids kickboxing. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah. But, uh, when we tell them, at least it's my thing when they're doing kicks and you know how when kids throw kicks, it's normally like an <sighs> up kick. Yeah. Just like, eh. <laughs> yeah. And 
And so what I always tell them is I was like, you don't want to be a swinging door. Like doors just kind of fly, swing back and forth. You don't want your leg to be lazy like a swinging door. You want to be able to throw your hips into it. Think about turning your hip down to the floor and really throw some power into it. And yeah. every time I talk about that swinging door, they always get better. When I had that, um, that time that I did the kids class at fluid striking mm-hmm. and then like the adult class, yeah. I was just like, how can I like translate these to kids? Oh, like, you're a lumberjack or a lumber person <laughs> and you have an axe and you're chopping down a tree. Yes. The axe is your leg. Yes. So kick the bag like that, essentially. Yep. And I see like people just, just totally just wailing on those bags. Yeah. I wonder the number of analogies that martial artists have made in the world. Way too many. <laughs> there should be a book about that. Yeah, no, TFTM, right. I'll trademark that. Like, yeah, just get everybody to throw their own bits and pieces of yeah. information. My dad's writing a book right now like really? that. Yeah. Nice. He's writing yeah. a chapter book on all of the analogies and philosophies that he's come up with in the last 21 years. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. It is. He yeah. has a bunch of cool stuff. But anyway. All well, right. Well, thanks, appreciate Josh. you. Yeah. Thanks for coming on the show. This was super Solid. fun. Yeah. So appreciate it. And yeah, we normally talk about what's coming up. I don't know what's coming up. Yeah. I don't even know what day it is. I feel like we've had a lot going on. But we have a pancakes and pajamas party on oh, yeah? this coming up Friday. It's December 16th. Everyone is welcome. It's an open mat. We're going to show up in pajamas and we're going to do breakfast for dinner. We just got some special pajamas yesterday. So I I've seen them. That. <laughs> oh. <laughs> They're fun. Yeah, we have that coming up. And then I think we're doing a Christmas Eve open mat. And that's about it for December. December's kind of calmed down a little bit, which is pretty nice. Yeah, oh, like there's holidays. a submission-only grappling tournament at Primal on Saturday. So if you're in the Milwaukee area, go out yeah. and support. Also, the charity rollathon. Or I'm not sure if it's a rollathon, but it's like a charity seminar oh, or open yeah. mat. On the 17th for yeah. Firewater free camp is coming up in February too, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. But yeah, free form. We'll be there too. One of their guys actually was just diagnosed with cancer. And so they're doing a rollathon for him. And they're going to be supporting his medical treatment. So if you can make it yeah, to free form on Saturday morning, that would be really cool. Also, yeah. check out maybe uh, Team USA Pancreation, yeah. uh, Dave Sixel. Uh, kind of see. Hopefully, there'll be a live stream of the event because we do live in 2022. So yeah. if we get that link, I'll be probably try and share it with everybody. Yeah. Well, yeah, 2023 shit. Right. <laughs> so that. Also, thank you, Jiu-Jitsu Insurance, for helping me with my uh. dislocation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did it? Did Chris that Bard, help you? You're a good guy, huh? Did that help you? Yeah. Did you just insurance? Yeah. Was, did you have it before you had? The, I got uh, it for the catch wrestling thing, okay, and then yeah. I ended up um, just keeping it because it's a lower policy, and right. it's nice to have that buffer of having yeah, some extra money. Because if you have normal health insurance and you get injured, it's like, okay, what did you do? Uh, I was fighting. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, so well, we're really going to cover a little bit of it. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's awesome. All right. Cool. Well, I hope you guys have a great week training, and we will talk to you soon. All right. Adios. Bye. I feel like I need to stretch. <laughs>